Next, we're going to take a look at the hog intestinal roundworm, Ascaris lumbricoides. Here we have a female and a male individual. The female is the larger individual at the top. The male is the smaller individual with the prominently hooked tail at the bottom. This female specimen is 22 centimeters long, and the male specimen is 15 centimeters long. So let's look at what we can see with the external anatomy. If we zoom in on this female worm, what we can see is that we've got a, re a region that is more translucent and a region that's more transparent. The more transparent region is the lateral cord, and there's one on the other side as well. We can also see the lateral cord on the male. Now the way that you can figure out is which way is dorsal and which way is ventral is you have to look at the anterior end of the worm. And you have to do that with a magnifying glass or a dissection microscope. And what you'll see is that there are three pads called lips on the anterior end of the worm. And two are ventral and one is dorsal. And the way that you know dorsal and ventral is you orient them in relation to the, um, the lateral cords. So what you want to do when you do a dissection is you want to orient your animal so that it is ventral surface down, pin it in place with some insect pins, and then you can go ahead with the dissection. On the male, probably the most prominent feature is this hooked posterior end, which has a couple of spicules that it uses to um, grip the female during copulation. Let's take a look at the internal anatomy of the female. Okay, just a little bit of walk through the rest of the worm. Everything else is reproductive. That's it. There are a whole bunch of small tubes and large tubes, and so everything except the intestine is reproductive. By the way, the Renette cells run the length of the body through these lateral canals, which are in the lateral cords. So let's take a look at the female reproductive system. Okay, what I did for this part of the dissection was I've removed the anterior part of the intestine and many of these small coiled structures like these that surrounded these two larger structures in the middle. Um, we'll talk about the smaller ones in just a second. But this structure right here, this teeny little tube, it comes up in this direction that tube attaches to the female gonopore and gives rise to this structure that comes up here. This is the vagina. The vagina is a Y-shaped structure that connects to two large tubes, the two branches of the uterus. All right, so let's continue where we were before. So this is the anterior end of the worm. The anterior intestine has been removed for clarity, the female gonopore, the vagina, and as we continue, continue posteriorly, what I've done is I've separated the two large branches of the uterus, and this strap-like st structure right here that's underneath is the intestine. So the, if we continue backward along the worm, we can see a region where I've not removed any of these smaller tubes. The smaller tubes are wrapped around the two branches of the uterus. And these tubes are oviduct. And the, you can see this in cross-section. We'll take a look at that in a slide or in a, a, micro, a photomicrograph. But these are the oviducts. And if we were unable to unravel all of this kind of twisted mass of tubes, what we would find is that there is one oviduct connected to each branch of the uterus. And at the tip of each oviduct, which is a closed-ended tube, is the ovary where the eggs are produced. And that is the anatomy of the female Ascaris. Oh, before we leave the female Ascaris, I should mention one more thing. If you find yourself with an opportunity to dissect one of these worms, what you need to be aware of is that these embryonated eggs that are in the uterus, 
um, have environmentally resistive outer coverings. And what that means is they can survive exposure to lots of different things. So a preserved specimen of Ascaris like this one could still have viable eggs inside because their protective outer shell could, could keep them safe from the preservatives that the animal was, uh, was stored in. Okay, let's take a look at the anatomy of male Ascaris. So here I have one that is has been opened up and you can see the characteristic hooked end on the posterior end of the body. So this is anterior up here. Let's zoom in and take a look. I haven't disturbed any of the internal anatomy other than opening the body wall. So the mouth and pharynx are up here, which gives rise to the strap-shaped intestine, which is kind of currently covered up and wrapped up in all of this material, these coiled tubes. We'll talk about those in a minute. And these coiled tubes, actually it's a single tube that runs the length of the body. And down here toward the posterior end, you see fewer of these tubes, but we see a a larger tube in cross-section. Coming back here, you can see again this larger tube and then the posterior hook. So let's take a look at some of the anatomy. So if we start back here, we have our, our hook-shaped posterior end and this large structure, this large um, structure that's tubular in cross-section is the seminal vesicle. And this is where sperm are stored until they are released. As you proceed anteriorly, the seminal vesicle trans, uh, transforms into a thinner tube that wraps around itself. This thin tube is the vas deferens that carries sperm from, uh, from the from the testes to the seminal vesicle. And as we continue, an continue anteriorly, what we can see is that, that this tube gets progressively smaller and smaller. And if we could unwind this whole thing, what we would find is that at the very end of the tube, which happens to be anterior in the body, is the testis. Wrapped up in the middle of that is the intestine, and it's just a strap-like structure that runs the length of the body. Also, we can see the lateral cords, one here, one over here. And that is the male Ascaris.